Welcome back. You're watching Money, Money, Money. With us is Keetan Shah of Credence Wealth Advisors. And today we've been talking about uh, the difference between net worth and cash flow and which is more important to you as an investor. So we've discussed the differences and, uh, you know, basically which kind of investor needs to focus on what kind of an investing strategy. But Keetan, one question that I had was, you know, why would a cash flow focused portfolio need equity at all? So, Sumera, we largely said that, you know, somebody who wants uh, uh, cash flow are, are individuals who probably are looking at, looking at financial freedom or are probably looking at uh, a cash flow because they are very close to retirement, so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, uh, the core principle of investing while you are trying to invest uh, is to try and generate uh, inflation-beating returns, right? Because if you are not able to beat inflation at the end of the day, Probably the kind of investing that you are doing theoretically may grow on paper, but you are largely, uh, you know, kind of going down on the value of the money that uh, you've been able to accumulate over a period of time. So largely, in my opinion, even somebody who is largely looking at a cash flow style of investing, right, is a lot risk averse, would also want to allocate, let's say, 20-25% of the portfolio to, to, to equities. Uh, first is because you want to create a portfolio which probably ends up beating inflation and adding a 20 25 percent uh, to the portfolio will definitely solve solve that problem second uh, like we also spoke that as a cash flow focused investor you know you would largely want to do value style of investing right now value style of investing takes care of two other things that are very relevant to a cash flow cash flow uh, generating uh, investor First is that when you do value style of investing, value style of investing is considered slightly more uh, or rather slightly less risk averse versus growth style of investing. So if you look at the volatility or standard deviation of a value-based uh, portfolio, you would see that the volatility is much lower than somebody who does growth uh, style of investing. Now that exactly fits in what probably a cash flow focused uh, individual or an investor is looking at. That is, I want to invest in equity to beat uh, inflation, but I don't want a lot of volatility. Mm -hmm. So when you do value investing of that 20-25% of your portfolio, that probably takes care of uh, less volatility. And also at that same time, while I talk about value investing, largely a lot of these value or contra investing happens in companies which pay very high dividends. right? So while you are trying to do a 20-25% allocation to equity, this also takes care of your cash flow requirements, Sumaira, which originally is the reason why you are building this portfolio. So you might do 20-25% in equity, but uh, that will have low volatility because it is value style. It might also pay you dividend, which will take care of your cash flow. And hence, at the end of the day, you try and tried building a portfolio which is not very volatile, is uh, aiming towards building uh, a portfolio which is uh, generating uh, inflation beating returns and also thanks to dividends that probably these uh, uh, stocks might end up paying your cash flow requirement is also taken care of and which is why largely i feel that even if you are more cash flow focused as an individual you probably still might want to add this 20 percent uh, to value style of equity investing somewhere okay fair enough but how can such a uh, investor take their first steps towards financial independence so, Sumer, I think it's very easy. Uh, uh, the reason why I quote this is because uh, first you will have to figure out what your what your uh, exact cash flow requirement is. Now, what I, what do I really mean by that is, let's say, for example, if you're looking at uh, uh, attaining uh, financial freedom or retiring, let's say, five years from today, the first thing, in my opinion, you would have to figure out is that if today your monthly expenses are, let's say, uh, 25,000 rupees a month, how much will this expense become five years later because of inflation, right? So let's say if, if your cash flow need today is 25,000, hypothetically, assuming inflation is growing at an X rate, your cash flow requirement might become 50,000 after five years when you are looking at attaining financial freedom. So you typically want to build your portfolio in a way that if through the portfolio, if cash flows are generated in a way where you are able to generate 50,000 rupees a month largely, right? then your expenses are taken care of and the remaining amount of money can then move into probably assets that might not be slightly more volatile but may 
add that growth aspects to the portfolio. So let's say if we are talking about the same example that I'm talking to you of, let's say if your requirement is 50,000 rupees a month, and if I consider today's, uh, uh, today's interest rate, let's say at 6%, then whatever amount of money that I have to accumulate, I know for a fact that one crore has to be kept, kept aside in a fixed interest-bearing instrument so that I can get I can get 6 lakhs a year uh, as cash flows. So if you put 1 lakh rupee at 6%, you will largely be able to generate 50,000 a month or probably 6 lakhs a year that you're looking at. And if your portfolio has accumulation beyond this 1 crore which has gone to fixed income, that is when you allocate uh, the remaining amount of money to probably a little bit of equity, a little bit of real estate, depending on the way you would really want to structure. But the first thing that you would want to do is assure that your living expenses, uh, including that of inflation, is taken care of after which you will allocate the remaining part of the money somewhere else. But typically what you should also keep in mind, in my opinion, Samara, is that while you are trying to do this, and let's say if you're somebody who's, who's probably looking at early retirement or early financial freedom, it might so happen that uh, you know, you've not been able to take care of all of your goals, right? So there may, there may be some goals uh, pertaining to child's education or a child's marriage or something else that is still something that you've not been able to take care of, but you're trying to attain a cash flow kind of a portfolio. So what you should ideally also do is that once you've secured this, this cash flow requirement of yours by putting money in fixed income, before putting money in some other assets to do with equity or real estate, you will try and first figure out that you would want to keep your money in a way that the given goal uh, that you are looking at attaining is also taken care of. So first you take care of your cash flows, then you take care of your goals, and if at all there is some money left is where you will look at parking that into uh, various other assets to try and, try and build a portfolio for yourself. Okay, Kiran, just one final question. You know, we are coming out of two years of a pandemic. Uh, you know, it's still a time of uncertainty because we're talking about uh, maybe, uh, you know, recession, there's inflation all around us. Uh, should ev any kind of investor currently be more focused on cash flow over net worth? So, Sumera, to answer this question uh, very uh, uh, technically for this particular point, the answer is a yes. You would typically see that value style of investing or the investing where we are talking about where cash flow generation is, is of importance. Uh, this is the kind of style that typically works in expensive market valuations mm -hmm. or uh, markets where you will see a slightly recessionary kind of a situation or inflationary kind of a situation. So if you look at historical data points, you will always relate to this fact that whenever markets have been expensive or whenever uh, you know, you've not really had confidence on the valuations uh, of the equities, you would typically see value style of investing has definitely performed more over growth style of investing, right? Where if you've received cash flows, those cash flows can easily be redeployed uh, at a given opportunity because you are in a situation where you will, you will keep getting opportunities because of inflation numbers probably not coming out in the direction that you want or or the recessionary pressure or the inflationary pressure that we are talking about. So yes, going by the historical data points, you will typically see that value style of investing always works in, in such a situation where you are not very happy with the kind of valuations that equity markets trade at, right? So Understood. definitely if you look at the current situation and uh, we are talking about how can new money be allocated, probably if you are expecting inflation not to come down, recession uh, to be buoyant, I think value style of investing will definitely do much better than growth style of investing. And the cash flows that you will make out of value style of investing may be redeployed at a much better opportunity versus doing a growth Understood. style of investing. Samara. Kirtan, thank you very much for joining in to explain this and to talk to our viewers about it. With that, we're going to wind up on this edition of Money, Money, Money. Do stay tuned. And of course, we'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.